Evening everyone! Welcome to our Instagram Live number three. It's with Liam Pitchford. He's the World 15. It's amazing to have him on board tonight. Hello Rosemary. Hello Liam. Just waiting for Liam to join now. Hello, you all right? Yeah, good, thank you, Liam. How, how are you doing yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I can't see your picture at the moment. All right. Um, I think it's there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Want me to close it and try again? Yeah, is that okay, please? I can only see myself at the moment. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's nice to see so many have joined. So we've got Nicola that's joined, John's joined, Zach has joined, which is fantastic. Jen has joined, which is great. Oh, okay. any better um not too sure what's going on maybe it's my end um i think i think uh, people are saying they can see me so. oh that's great um i can't but uh, we'll continue but <laughs> i just want to say on behalf of everyone else um, from british Army table tennis the committee and the players are really excited about this evening and it's great to have a world-class player join us this evening and uh you know, congrats on your recent success beating the world number one and stuff like that. It's just been great to follow. Thank um, you. So welcome. Um, yeah, so um, while I wait for a few questions to come in from our guys and across your fans as well, um, I just, you know, wondered, because we have a range of um, players within British Army Table Tennis, we have absolute beginners to National League players. I just wondered if you could okay. do a little intro about yourself. Are you still there? Guys, I'm, we're just having a few technical issues with this at the moment. I'm just going to end the... Oh, oh, you're there. Well, hey! Uh, I don't know what happened there. No, I don't know. Maybe a lot of people are doing Instagram Lives this evening. Because yeah. that's <laughs> what I was hoping, so I could see who I was talking to. But... Um, yeah, so I'll start again. So, you know, British Army Table Tennis are chuffed to have you uh, this evening. You know, a lot of our players are fans of yours. And uh, But I was just saying we have a, um, absolute beginners, which is fantastic, to National League level. So for those that aren't uh, aware of who you are, can you do a little introduction of your achievements and how you got <laughs> into the sport and things like that? That'll be really Yeah, I'll try, I'll try. Um, yeah, so I've... Obviously, I'm 26 now. I've been playing a good 15, 16 years. Um, Six-time English champion, uh, World Championship bronze medalist, World Cup bronze medalist, um, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and eight Commonwealth Games medals. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about it. I started, you know, when I was about nine years old, really, um, and I was just at, at junior school. I used to play tennis. I used to be um, county level at tennis when I was young. Oh, wow. Um, and then, yeah, just I went to me and two friends. We usually went outside to play football, but it was raining and um, came inside. They had a little table tennis club going on. And um, yeah, we went in, started playing and just carried on from there, really. Oh, kind fantastic. Of just, yeah, I just loved it. As soon as I picked up a bat, it just, just hooked me. Oh, that's good. So, what made so? Um, what do you think made the decision for you, the overall decision to go and you know be a well, you know, world class player and focus and have that as your goal? Yeah, I think you know, obviously I played tennis and um, to a decent level as well. So I had to sort of 
when I started to play table tennis, I had to make a decision which one I wanted to to pursue, really. And the the decision for me, I sort of made it because I just enjoyed the atmosphere in, in the table tennis hall, just the people. You know, everything was a lot more sociable. People were a yeah. lot nicer. Um, and that made it easy for me, really, to, to decide to play table tennis. And then, obviously, once once I'd made that decision, then... And then I had a lot, lot of practice to do before, um, before I got to the level I am. So um, yeah, it's been a long journey, but it's been, been worthwhile. Yeah. So obviously, um, with the current situation at the moment, um, obviously there's lockdown in place. So how is that affecting your training? Obviously, the Olympics has been pushed back a year, um, and you know, how do you prepare for something like that? Obviously, you're top of your game, so you obviously. We just like an insight on how you're coping with all that. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a bit of a tough time for everyone, you know, not just sports people, but you know, every, everyone in around the world. Obviously, it's affecting everything, and um, yeah, it's tricky. I've, obviously, luckily, my sponsor sent me a table over, so I've got a table in my house now. Um, so I'm managing to do a little bit of practice. Obviously, it's not not the usual level of practice that I'd get day in day out, but you know, it keeps my hand in, keeps my feeling in there and I'm just sort of, yeah, doing, got a physical um, programme from my fitness coach uh, that I'm doing as well alongside playing a little bit. So I'm just, you know, waiting for, waiting for the green light so we can practice again, really. It's, um, normally I'm on the road travelling all the time, so it's a bit, it's a bit weird for me, you know, being home a lot. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm one, one way it's, uh, it's nice to be be home for a little bit, but I'm I'm the kind of person that always has to be doing something, so I get a bit bored if I'm you know just sat at home. So uh, yeah, just want to get back out on the table. Yeah, I bet you can't wait to get back on the table. I'm just um, loads of people have joined tonight. Uh, loads of people. Um, so uh, I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Um, just bear with me a second. Um, I think someone said um, yeah. So Rowan. Broff, I think, said hello, um, I think. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of fans on here this evening. Um, so Gemma says, hi, Liam, thanks for joining us tonight. Of all your fantastic achievements, what's been your most memorable one? Um, yeah, luckily, you know, there's been a few. But for me, I'd say probably winning Commonwealth Games gold um, alongside Paul Drinkor in the doubles. You know, I, you know, I've always been a massive sports fan ever since I was young, and you know, I remember watching the Commonwealth Games on TV, and you know, I've always wanted to stand on the top top step of that podium. And when um, I managed to managed to do it in the Gold Coast, it was um, kind of a, a special feeling and one that I'll never forget. Really, um, obviously, you know, winning that World Championship bronze medal mm. that in the team event in 2016. Probably table tennis wise, that's my biggest achievement. Um, just because, obviously, it wasn't really expected. Nobody expected us to to be able to to win a bronze medal there, and obviously we pushed Japan close as well. So, you know, it proved that we can compete with the the best countries in the world. Yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously, your recent win against the world number one that must you must have celebrated after that. And how did you feel when you went into the match and? You know, obviously, how did you feel, obviously, afterwards? I mean, yeah, it was, uh, you know, that match was probably probably some of the best table tennis I've ever ever played. Um, you know, I've had some good wins in the past, but, you know, I think my level in that match was um, a step above, the, where, you know, where it's been before. And um, that gave me a lot of confidence. And it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, bit of a shame that, obviously, straight after that tournament, we got put in lockdown. Um yeah, so you know, I was on a on a bit of a high and and hoping to to carry on that form, but hopefully I can carry it on when we when we get back out on the table. But um, yeah, I I didn't feel you know obviously I was the underdog. He had a lot of pressure on him, and um, I just you know felt felt quite relaxed before the match. Just wanted to to go out and give it my best. Started off a little bit nervous first set, but then um, as I gradually got into the match, I think it. Um, everything just sort of flowed and um, just clicked together at the, the right time. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So we've got a few messages here. So Kieran, he's one of our army players. 
he said, hi, Hannah and Liam, good to see you and hope you're doing well, Liam. Um, and then we've got Zach, he's another army player. And he said, all right, Liam, what sort of training are you doing off the table? What is important to improving your play? Because he'd love some tips off you. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously not many people can get on the table at the moment, especially in the UK. So um, I've got a specific uh, fitness program from my coach that, you know, generally I do sort of in between, you know, when I when I get blocks to be able to, when I'm not travelling or playing tournaments or matches, you know, I come back and, and do the work with him. And I have some stuff when I'm travelling as well, but he put together sort of a, a lockdown. So I'm doing sort of two two sessions of physical a day and, yeah, it's been been quite quite tough, but you know, it's um, generally I think a lot of for me I need a lot of more sort of power, explosive power exercises so I can get you know that speed and, and power in my legs. I'm sort of not the not the uh, biggest built guy in the in the table tennis hall, but um, you know some some other people need a bit more speed and agility. Whereas I think naturally I'm quite fast and quite good at sort of long distance running um so i think it varies i think from person to person okay that's interesting and um, we've got another question as well from uh um here they say liam do you have a training buddy um during this quarantine uh to maintain to maintain your game uh no i've got a robot you know i've got no, a, okay. a robot so uh he he does his best Keeps me on my toes. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine firing the balls everywhere. <laughs> um, I think it's Luca, Finley, son. I'm not sure if you know them, but they've put what tactics do you train the most and use the most in doubles? Um, recently, you know, I've sort of done a lot of work sort of on specific um, exercises that had, you know, things that are going to happen in a match. So I've worked a lot on that, um, you know, sort of, Air, you know, focusing more on serve and receive than the first sort of three to five balls in the rally. So those are the most important, I find. I think these days I find that everybody can sort of, you know, everybody can play backhand and forehand. I think where where you you see the, the top players split from the, you know, the, the lower ranked players is, you know, in that serve and receive game and how they how they can catch players out and, uh, you know, make things, make difficult things look easy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because I think I've been advised um, to have a couple of serves, you know, because if you use the same one, so do you advise our players of all levels to have um, at least three or four serves in the bank? Or, you know, what do you recommend? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you need to have that variation, not just in serves, but in in sort of everything receives mm. where you're going to play the ball if before and back and you need to have variation in everything I think it's good to have a few serves just not so the opponent can't get used to the you know the the game your game how you're trying to play I think you know if they if you can serve one serve and they don't receive it very well but then they get used to it then you need to have another one that you know so it's um, I guess it depends how your opponent's receiving really yeah, that's it. Um, we've just got another question here. It says, hello, Liam. Um, I want to ask, how did it feel winning against top-notch players? So, you know, that's the question there. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's obviously a confidence booster. I yep. think, it, you know, obviously, there's been, you know, it's table tennis. You, you win some and you lose some, you know, it's a bit of up and down sometimes. And um, obviously the aim for everybody is to, to compete or compete always at a solid level and um for me it's just beating beating the best players in the world obviously gives me a lot of confidence and proves to me that you know I, I am at that level yes. and um and yeah it's, for me it's about finding that level more often than not really yeah so well, thank you for that answer so um we have another question here so it says england versus holland euro 96 on itv and so Liam Pitchford, Instagram, what a time to be alive. Oh, I thought it was a question, but clearly not. <laughs> They're just a fan of you more than the football, so that's great to know. Um, and then someone's put, I'm Japanese, I like you. So that's nice. Cheers. And uh, I think uh, Rob here says, come share them with our 
at a camp. So he obviously wants you to come to our training camp. Yeah. Uh, that's what you need. <laughs> um, so Liam, I am a big fan. You can give me your t-shirt, okay? They obviously like your t-shirt. <laughs> um, we got any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just trying to see, so apologies for that. Um, do you prefer playing singles or doubles? Um, I think Paul, Paul might be watching, so... Um, <laughs> no, no. Obviously, I think table tennis is, uh, is mainly an individual sport. Um, obviously, sometimes you come together to play team and, and doubles, so... You know, obviously, I like playing doubles. You know, I think I've had some of my, some like I said, some of my, one of my most, or probably my most memorable moment playing doubles. So, um, yes, obviously, you know, it's it is special, but you know, obviously, prefer playing singles and just ha fe I feel in that sort of singles atmosphere is just for me is something about it. Um. So um, someone's asking more about the mental side of the game. So someone said, how, how do you sort of plan in a close point position? So 10, 11, for example, so how do you cope with that side of the game when it's pressures on? Yeah, um, I've done a, lot, done a lot of work on, on that side of my game, definitely. And, you know, after doing that, it, it definitely helped me, you know, make the steps of becoming, you know, a top 20 player, I'd say. And, um, yeah, there's... A, for me, it was, it was just about trying to be be brave and not, you know, trusting in my game. Um, you know, obviously, I've done a lot of practice, or you know, if everyone practices in the training, or if you practice, you know, those those scenarios that are going to happen at the end of the end of a match or when it gets close, I think it's easier to transfer that when you get to a match um, and when you get to the table. So then it sort of feels more natural. Obviously, there's still nerves there if it's you know, three all and nine all, obviously you're still going to be nervous. But for me, I think, you know, when I sort of worked more on that in my practice, I found when I got to that position, you know, everything just felt, you know, I felt more confident, more more trusting in what I was going to do and how I was going to play the point. OK, we've got another question here. It says, what club or team will you be playing for in the new season? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm carrying on in... Um, for my Japanese club, TT Saitama, um, in the Japanese league next season. So I'm um, looking forward to that when it starts again. Oh, fantastic. Um, so uh, obviously you've been to a few Olympics and uh, Commonwealth Games. So, we, uh, you know, just for to give an insight, what do you think, what's the atmosphere like? Are they similar? I, I assume they're very different and uh, must be amazing, you know, doing the opening ceremonies and things like that. Yeah, I mean, um, multi-sport games are obviously the biggest biggest events you can go to. Obviously, Commonwealth and, and Olympics. I mean, for me, Olymp when I obviously I played London because we were got a host nation place, and I, I was lucky enough to to be there. And just you know, just being around these massive, massive athletes, you know, going out and winning gold medals, and sort of an eye opener for me. I sort of. You know, it spurred me on definitely to qualify by my own right for Rio. And, um, yeah, it, it gave me that sort of drive and just more hunger to, to do more and just to make make more of myself in the game. Oh, fantastic. Someone's put, um, hi, hi, Liam. With the Olympics moving on to next year, you reckon GB team can be red, ready and likely to podium in any army any sorry, any men and female disciplines? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, everyone, we need to qualify first. Obviously, we didn't qualify as a team, um, but you know, singles. Um, there's a few. Uh, you obviously get two places, so it's um, very you know likely that me and Paul are, are going to be playing the qualification tournaments. Um, and yeah, I mean. You know, it's difficult to say if, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Olympic medals are very hard to come by. So, you know, the the aim, obviously, if I go to the Olympics is to, to do the best I can. I'm not going to say that I'm going to come away with a medal, but I'm going to do, obviously, going to do my, give my all to, to do that. I like everybody else's. And, um, you know, I've proved in the past that I can get to the, the, 
the end of tournaments, you know, beat beat the Chinese and um, it's just about doing it on that day and hopefully I'll be well prepared. You know, I've got another year to prepare for it and um, yeah, hopefully. hopefully yeah, well, yeah, definitely we'll be backing you all the way. And um, um, Pete's just re reminiscing about the time he met you in 2017 in Nottingham at the Championships. Um, yeah. He's just saying now you're on top of your game uh, reaching quarter world champs final, what is your secret? You know, he really wants to improve his game, and just, you know. Um, yeah, for me, it's making that step. It was sort of, you know, the end of twenty seventeen, beginning of twenty eighteen. I had a, a really good year in twenty eighteen, and you know, towards the end of twenty seventeen, I started doing a lot more work on my mental side of of my game, and um, you know, I found that that it sort of brought different aspects that I hadn't thought about before and helped me sort of yeah have a, a better understanding of of the whole, of my of my whole sort of game you know whether it be mentally tactically physically and it just sort of opened my eyes and then suddenly mm -hmm. I found myself improving and, and playing really well so that was kind of the start of everything. That's fantastic. Someone's put here, what's your toughest opponent throughout the last season, from the last season? Um, my toughest opponent? You know, I obviously played a lot of very good players. I mean, I'd have to, have to say Fan Zendong, you know, best. Yeah. For me, he's, a, he's an absolute machine. I think, um, you know, and I, I think I had chances against him, obviously, in Qatar Open in the final. Um, it was a tough match, but you know he's always always on the on the best of his game, and um, it's uh, it's tricky. Obviously, it's it's very hard to beat him, and hopefully one day I can. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so someone's put um, been very quiet actually, Mister Pitchford. Sir, what are you thinking during a long rally? Purely tactical, physical, technical. What are your eyes focused on? <laughs> that's Interesting question, well, that. I, I see him. I see him. Um, <laughs> no, I, try, try and just focus on the ball. You know, I, when I play, I try not to think too much about about sort of tactics, and you know, I, I try to try to watch my opponent as much as I can, see where see where he's moving, how his weight, you know, where where his weight is and his body, and see if I can catch him out of position. Um, is is there one piece of advice you could say to your younger self and what would it be? Yeah, um, I think it would be tra train smarter, I would say. Probably. Okay. I think, you know, when I was younger, I was a little bit naive. You know, I was just practising just for, you know, for, for the sake of, of practising that wasn't, Probably wasn't practicing clever enough for, you know, for how I needed to be um, to become obviously to improve quicker and, and to become a better player. Something I learned a bit later on in my career. Okay, so um, someone's put now that you've reached world top twenty. Um, what's the future progression? Is your aims world number one, or you know, what are your goals that you're setting for yourself? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, if you, if we're talking about rankings and stuff, obviously the next goal is to be be top ten. Um, you know, I've been number twelve; that's my highest. So, you know, naturally, top ten is the uh, is the next mark to reach. I try not, you know, I try not to think too much about rankings and 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 stuff like that because I think at the end of the day, if you if you're doing the work and you're you're getting the results, at the end of the day, the rankings will will show show that and um you know i'm just trying to trying to work on that consistency really um i think you know the three tournaments before lockdown were really good for me gave me a lot of confidence um and yeah i've been trying to trying to find a way to carry that on when we come out of this and and the tournaments start again that's fantastic um, i'm just seeing if there's any more questions um the sure there is at the moment um 
you know, um, during lockdown, um, are you having more ch chance to relax or, you know, do what other things do you like doing? Do you like watching films or is it, you know, or is it a really strict regime where you don't get much free time? Um, yeah, I'm not really one for, I don't really watch many films, to be honest. I'm more of a series guy. I oh, find okay. it, you know, if I, I don't know, I don't, it's weird. So, I'll, you know, if I watch a, a film, say I watch a two hour film, mm. I, I get really sort of fidgety and a bit bored. But when I watch a series, I can watch five 40 minutes episodes in a row and, and not get yeah. bored. So it's a bit weird. I'm a bit, a bit weird like that. But no, I've, you know, I've got a bit more, a bit more free time than usual. Um, play play a bit a bit more PlayStation than I normally do. <laughs> um, it's still not very good, but. <laughs> um, um, someone's asked, do you enjoy the fitness training, um, or you know, what, what's your favourite bit about it? If you do enjoy it, um, I enjoy some parts of it. I think everybody has, you know, certain sides of fitness that they like and some that they don't like. Um, I don't particularly like running, even though I'm actually quite good at it. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, obviously the strength work is something that I've always had to, always had to work on really. Um, and it's something that, you know, I quite enjoy doing it because I know at the end of the day it's hard, but, you know, I'll see more of an improvement from that. So I kind of get, get sort of a, bit of enjoyment out of that yeah i guess you see results and yeah and fitter and then it obviously helps you towards your goals olympics yeah. commonwealths and all the tournaments you go to yeah, yeah so that makes sense yeah yeah um just seeing if there's any more questions um we'll just wait a few minutes um and if there isn't any more then uh we might leave it there if you're happy, Liam. I yeah, yeah. There's any more. I think there's one about is, is British Table Tennis in a good place? What we, I don't know if you want me to answer that. Yeah, you can do, yes, please. Yeah, I mean, I think at the moment, British Table Tennis is probably the best it's been for, for a long time. Obviously, you know, results wise, we've, we've been pretty good in the last couple of years sort of up and down obviously not as consistent as we'd like obviously me and Paul have sort of been the the backbone of of every you know the results really and um you know there's a couple of guys that are you know three four and five backing it up um and uh but you know sort of behind that I think it's a, it's a tricky one I think you know there's a lot of young players that in England that aren't actually getting the you know the experience outside of England, and I think, you know, they they need to they need to get out into Europe and see, you know, how the how the German system is, how the French system is, you know, things like that, just to just to have the experience and have a different way of seeing table tennis and a different different way of working. You know, when I was young, I obviously had Paul and that to look up to, and that were training really hard. Whereas obviously when I moved at, to Germany, I think you know the next generation didn't really have anybody to to look up to to see you know where they need to be and and what they need to be doing when they're working. So yeah, it's a, hopefully now that you know we're all back in England and, and practicing in England that the you know the next set of players can can have somebody to look up to and somewhere to to have a goal to reach. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um... Um, he's. We've got a question here. It says, "What type of blade and rubbers do you play with?" Um, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I use uh, Victas blade and rubbers now. So I changed sponsor um, last year, and um, yeah, I use Victas V15 extra rubbers. And um, yeah, actually, my blade from Victas is coming out in the summer, so hopefully that's out soon. Okay. So um, I'll be using that. <laughs> Okay, someone's put, what is your dream? And then another one is, uh, who's your superhero? So a few extra my questions dream. there. My table tennis dream, obviously, to win Olympic gold. Uh, that's my table tennis dream. Um, what was the other one? 
Sorry. Um, use your superhero. Super, superhero. Um, that was an offline question. <laughs> su Superman. <laughs> Fair one. Um, so, so what advice uh, would you give about creating more pace on a backhand? What advice would I give for that? Um, math. Good question. It's a tricky one. Difficult to explain it over over here. Um, but I'd say try try not try not to hit the ball too hard. You know, it's easy to say that, but it's you know. I'd say you need to try and be as relaxed as possible when you're moving into the ball, if that makes yeah. sense. And then when you hit the ball, then you you can sort of tighten up. But if you're tight, too tight when you you know start to play your shot, you lose that energy into the ball. Um, and obviously with that, you lose speed and, and spin. Um So there, I think we've had that question already. Um, it says here, in your mind, butterfly better or Donic? <laughs> Big test. <laughs> I assume that's what they mean. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting question. Big test. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, 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 John's book, congratulations to you and Paul on all your success and many thanks for doing this call-in. Uh, best of luck to you for the new season. And he's Thank our army uh, coach. Um, but yeah. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Um, and uh, the army men's captain, he's brought uh, congratulations on all your successes. Um, and he's a huge fan. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so... Uh, Appreciate it. Come on here. Dave, Dave McBeth, Dave McBeth definitely, definitely got a better reverse serve than me. <laughs> Anyone's wondering. <laughs> well, okay. Um, is there any others that I've missed? It's because we're getting so many questions through. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, who's your favourite player? I've just seen that. Who's my favourite player? Um, when I was young, it was uh, it was Samsonov. Yeah, definitely. Just how how easy it makes it look. Um, so yeah, definitely, he's a, a good one to watch. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, do you do anything different for Chinese opponents, or do you just have the same game plan each time? Um, yeah, good question. I think yeah. you know, I, you know, in my mind, I try and just do the same thing as I always would, you know. And if obviously against the Chinese, you know, it's it's going to be ten times harder, and you're going to have to sort of I know it sounds cheesy, but you're gonna to have to win the point three times before you actually win the point. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it, it's. It, I think you just got to be, be clever and ready to sort of play with variation more against the against the Chinese. Try not to let them get into their rhythm because once they're in their rhythm, mm -hmm. they're very, very, very difficult to stop. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, did you ever? Test play with the Victus Dinner Diner Seven Blade at all? Um, no, no, I haven't. No, okay. Sorry. No, no, it's uh, just someone's okay. asking that. And then, could you give us a summary on what your journey has looked like from when you started until now? <laughs> oh, it might take a while for that one. I think. I uh, know. I don't know <laughs> if you've got enough time. <laughs> yeah, very, very up and down. Yeah, very up and down. There's been highs and there's been lows. Um, just like I think any any athlete's career, so um, you know, hopefully my my gradient is is going to look more like that. But well, uh, we'll be backing you all the way, so uh, we'll be following your progress when yeah. everything's Thank back you. in uh, back in full season. Um, what is your idea about Lang Ying Kung? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> he um, is my best player. That's you're not meant to say that. Liam's our favourite player. Yeah. Get with the program. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously Chinese. He's in Chinese national team. He's obviously a great player. Never played against him, so I can't really. It's difficult to to comment, but obviously he's one of the best players in the world. So yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, a lot of people wishing you the best. Um, just seeing if I've missed any. Uh, someone said, do you like playing in India? Or I'll change the question slightly. Uh, what's the favourite country you've, you've played in? Ooh, you know, I'm going to have to... <laughs> Difficult one. Obviously, I, like, I love playing in England, you know, because obviously I don't do it that often. Um, you, know, uh, you know, hopefully we get more big events in the future in England so, you know, the fans can, can get behind us a bit more. You know, for me, when we had the 2018 World Team Cup in London and, you know, we won a bronze medal there, it was um, to have that whole whole stadium just behind us was was massive. And um, but other than that, you know, a lot of, a lot of countries that I've been to that have amazing support, especially, you know, out in Asia, they get a lot more more fans. But even sort of Germany, France, when I've played league there, you know, the crowds, uh, they love table tennis and hopefully yeah. we can we can have that sort of league system in the UK soon and help, to help it to grow. Yeah, that would be great. Um, someone's just said, do you call heads or tails on the toss-up? Elect to serve or receive. Do you remember when Gaza scored that goal against Scotland? <laughs> um, I definitely serve if I win the toss. I definitely serve. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember when Gaza scored. I'm not that old. <laughs> I was going to say you. are a lot younger than me as well. <laughs> um, someone's put. Does it bother you when Tomakasi? Oh dear me! I can't say these names. Screams all the time. I don't know, interesting question. No, no, don't bother <laughs> me, you know, no, just let, I, let him get on with it. I guess you're just focusing on your game and... Yeah, yeah, just try and block it out, you know, if he, he obviously does that to, to help his game, so each to their own. Exactly. Um, someone's put, who is better in the British or England squad? You or this Paul Brinkle or Walker? I know, <laughs> he's going it. for it, he's <laughs> going for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't answer that I'll let, I'll let everybody else answer that one <laughs> yeah no that's a very good answer we just wanted me, to test me you Paul, there me and Paul have won, won six nationals each so you could say we're, we're the same cracking answer you know yeah. <laughs> they're testing you here aren't they <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting <I'm> <laughs> I know well it's the yeah you're in your right to do that um, we've seen that you played a lot with Tintin Ho as well so do you enjoy mixed doubles um, as well? Or do you prefer the men's doubles or can't you really compare? Um, yeah, it's it's different. You know, obviously it's different playing mixed and men's doubles. Um, generally, I've only, you know, I played mixed doubles at the Commonwealth um, with Tintin twice and we've won two silver medals. So obviously we, we do something right. Definitely. Um, <laughs> You know, hope maybe next time we can win gold. But um, but yeah, I mean, doubles is something that you know it's it's sort of doesn't happen very often. So it's it, for me, it's sort of a a bit of a tricky one. Okay, so um, someone's asking, uh, can you remember something interesting in your uh, match against? I'm really bad with saying these names. So help <laughs> yeah. me out. That's the one. Thank you, Liam. <laughs> Uh, I can, uh, you know, there were a few good points in it. I just remember I won at the end of the day. So. <laughs> I was going to say it was a long match, so yeah. uh, it must be tricky to remember an actual yeah. moment, I yeah, guess. Adren adrenaline the moment. and all that. Yeah, definitely. Um, someone's asked, what was your favourite moment at the Hungarian Open in 2020? Um, meeting meeting that, that guy, little kid. Yeah, he was there. Uh, my biggest fan. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, that's nice. Um, um, Rob Spot, we have you and Paul on the next for a chat. Um, <laughs> and, you know, um, he's inviting you to come and visit British Army Table Tennis one day. He's the secretary. Um, yeah. Yeah, he definitely. really appreciates what you've done this evening for no the Table Tennis. Right. Um, you know, because it is... Um, I think the sport is on the up, actually, you know, when we're trying to do our bit to promote the sport, because it yeah. is really sociable, like you say, and fun. And um, do you think that's improving, you know, with obviously media and things like that? Yeah, I think it is. I think, you know, especially for me, I've seen definitely sort of ITTF, they've upped their sort of media 
media game, I think. It's been a lot better over the last sort of few months. Um, Table Tennis England, obviously, doing a lot to, to promote the sport in England. Um, obviously, you guys promoting, and, uh, you know, obviously with the British Army, it's, it's gets a big following. And um, I think that's what we all need to sort of chip in and just try and make Table Tennis, you know, I'm trying to do my bit as best I can. Um, but I think, like you say, a lot of people do play Table Tennis. They just don't see it very often in a professional capacity to really get, you know, get glued and get enjoying it really when you see it on TV. So hopefully, you know, with the ITTF sort of vision with world table tennis next year, next year, hopefully we get more TV coverage and, you know, that leads to, to bigger opportunities. Definitely. Because I think we've noticed that um, um, within the army, people are a bit of ping pong and actually yeah. when they actually come to the gym hall and they've done a swim or some circuit or, you know, training upstairs and then they actually watch and they see, you know, our army level. Um, you know, league players, they actually go, yeah. oh, hang on a minute, it's actually a serious sport. So I think yeah. people, you said a good point there, I think people, um, you know, it is a, I know you can play for fun, which is what we want to encourage, but it is actually a, you know, a high level sport and you can enjoy it at any level, you know, from beginner to your level, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's why it's so versatile, really. Um you know, you can have sort of five-year-old kids playing and you can have sort of 95-year-old people playing and, um, you know, they can sort of play together and enjoy it still. And it's, you know, it, it just that sort of stuff doesn't get seen as often, I think. And, um, yeah. and yeah, I think just, you know, especially, you know, now in England, I think it's just, we just need to, to slowly sort of start to build you know, from the ground up and, and hopefully hopefully we can get, obviously get more people playing but then produce sort of the next next generation as well because I think, you know, I think David is doing, David says England doing a good job, you know, with the sort of 9 to 13 year old group that they've got and um, good idea to start there and hopefully we'll sort of have more of a, more people staying in the sport that way um, at a higher, higher level. Yeah, someone's just put here, would you play with a fan for a few points? I guess for charity or just yeah, yeah. in general? Don't, don't mind that. I've done it done it before. I'm sure I'll do it again. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Um, does having a gym build muscles help with the games? Obviously, strength and conditioning, I think you said before, it does help. Yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. Um, um, someone's asked for a few tips for improving their backhand. I think they're struggling with, you know, possibly the spin or, you know, how can they improve it? Um, oh, tricky, tricky to explain it, you know, without showing stuff. But, um, yeah, like I said earlier, um, with the sort of trying to be as relaxed as possible before you hit the ball, that's one. Wait, wait for the ball at the top of the bounce. Depends what what shot you're playing it off and what ball's coming at you, really. Um, I probably play a backhand a little bit different to, to what most people are taught how to play a backhand, so, you know, it's difficult for me to explain. Um, I, I obviously start with the back quite open, whereas a lot of people um, start with the back fairly closed. Because so I, I <clears throat> tend to use a lot of wrist in my backhand, um, okay. probably a lot more than other people, so... You know, give it a go. <laughs> go with that if you're if you're feeling feeling lucky. <laughs> um, someone's asked, um, can you give some tips on sort of reading the serve and you know and a good you know receiving the uh, and receiving it as well. Um, I think you know you need to you know, watch your opponent. You know, watch their racket, how they've contacted the ball. Um, watch the ball see what spins on it and then i'd say you know don't don't rush in too early don't don't make a decision too early wait and then then make your decision once you you know once you've seen your opponent seen the table seen the ball where you're going to play you've thought about it a little bit you know obviously these are split second decisions but um yeah i think that's that's my best piece of advice no that's really helpful um I just had a thought then. Uh, would you uh, would you do um, 
charity table tennis event i don't know would that help promote the sport or has that been done before you know um, um... yeah that yeah i think you know so there's a lot of options and a lot of things i think you know going in the pipeline and stuff like that so you know hopefully but you know hopefully if, you know if we keep getting good results as well hopefully that can help grow the sport you know that's that's on our part to do and um and yeah you know the media stuff i'll leave that to the, the professionals definitely definitely <laughs> um just trying to think see if there's any more have you can you see any as well that i've possibly missed uh, um, i think i've captured the majority of them i think some of them are yeah. quite similar yeah i think We've, we've got a lot done there no we have you know um we really do appreciate your time this evening and uh no you know we'll be following your progress and uh you know i think that's given a really good insight and you know your tips yeah, will exactly. help a lot of our players and uh we just had a message from the coach our coach actually just saying very enjoyable interview and well done and big thanks and uh no, you no know, from the media that's side it. Yeah, thank you for joining us and being part of it. Um, no, no, uh, no, thank you. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, like like I said, hopefully, you know, when all this is over, you know, I hope I can come down and give a few tips in person. Oh, you know what? We'd love to have you uh, come along and uh, meet some of our players. And, uh, you know, we'd jump at the chance of that. You know, our players would be yeah. uh, really excited to meet you. And like I was when uh, me and Pete uh met you and a lot yeah. of the guys and uh no it was really good fun and um you know we've got a load more messages saying you know stay safe and uh yeah yeah you too. thank you yeah, definitely <laughs> yeah fun. yeah all the best liam and no thanks for having me take yeah. care yeah yeah take care thank you Cheers, yeah, thanks, bye. bye 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 see you later bye 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 Thank you to everyone for joining Liam and I this evening. It's been a really interesting insight to his career and you know how, how he go about his daily routine. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at, with our future Instagram lives with a lot of the top stars. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye.